In this video tutorial, we are going to build the chart that you see on your screen. This is a JavaScript diagram, built with the MindFusion Diagramming Library. The nodes are arranged using the tree map layout. The nodes have images and text, and the tooltip shows additional data. The data for the whole diagram is taken from an XML file. We start the project with an empty folder. We need to add first the scripts of the diagram library. There are various ways to do that. We'll go to the product page of JS Diagram, and there you can download the trial version. This is the contents of the downloaded archive file. There you have a scripts folder which contains all script files for the diagram in different variations. If you are not familiar with the differences, you'd better go to the Samples folder and from there navigate to the subfolder of your chosen platform. There you will see another script subfolder. Copy this one. As a rule, it is always easier to build your diagram based on an existing sample. The Samples page of the library shows all samples with a screenshot. So, you can choose one that is closest to what you plan to do. Then you can find its code in the Samples folder and study it. We create now an empty web page with the name Lithium Production. There, we add the HTML code for the page. We also create an empty JavaScript file, which we'll use for the application. Next, we copy the data file. As you see, this is a simple XML file, which contains the data for the diagram. We will use the Visual Studio to open the folder of our project as a website. This allows us to have a running web server when we want to run the project. Of course, you can use it with any other server. We need a web server in order to load the data file. Now we edit the web page to add references to all JavaScript files that we'll need for the diagram. They are already in the scripts folder as you know. We also add a reference to the code behind file, which we created and is located in the main folder. The diagram requires a canvas element to draw itself onto, so we add a canvas inside a div element that takes most of the web page. With that, we are ready with the web page and it's time to start coding the app. We start with some deep space mappings. The reason we do this is to make our code easier to read, no other special reasons for that. We also initialize three variables, the diagram, the diagram view, and scale. Note that the diagram is separate from the view that renders it. The diagram is the object that contains the nodes, links, arranges them, and so on. The diagram view renders the content of the diagram. Let's now create the diagram. Here is the time to point out that the canvas element at the web page has an ID, so we can access it in the JavaScript code. We use it to create a diagram object and set its behavior to modify. Let's check the behavior enumeration from the online help. It has lots of members, which specify various ways the diagram can respond to user action. We can try to run our sample now. Here it is. The diagram seems to be there, but we cannot do anything. Of course, the modify behavior doesn't allow this. Let's change the behavior to link shapes and see what happens. We are able to create shapes now, so let's go on with our project. First, we reset the diagram behavior. Then we initialize a new method, create tree map. There we clear the diagram from all remaining items and try to load the data XML file with the help of an XML HTTP request. If we succeed in getting the document, we parse it with the help of a DOM parser. We also need an index variable to keep track of the nodes. As you might remember, our XML nodes were named country, so we get them. 
we also create a container node, which will hold all nodes for the lithium producers from the data file. The container node class is fully described in the online documentation, and you can check there its numerous properties. We assign to it text, which will be rendered at the top. Then we need to create a shape node for each country in the XML file. We parse the production amount for this country, which was a round number, if you have noticed. Then we create a tooltip for the node, which combines the amount and some custom text. Finally, we add the new node to the container. Let's not forget to add a call to the createTreeMap method. Let's assign weights to nodes. The weights are important for correct arrangement of the nodes by the tree map layout algorithm. The weights are the values for each country, which we stored in the tag property. We call the method after the nodes are created. We specify some earth colors for the scale array. They will be used as a background for the nodes, depending on the weight. Then we need to assign the right color to each node. For that to happen, we must look through all nodes that are added to the container node and find the one with the largest value for production. That was recorded in the tag, as you know. We store the max value in a map. What we need to do next is get the maximum value of production which we've kept in the map, and use it to calculate the coloring scale of the node. We will do the calculations in a separate method called getScaleColor. The getScaleColor method calculates the RGB values for the node brush using the total value and the colors from the scale array. These are universal calculations which you can use with any diagram that you want arranged with a tree view map. Note that there are no limits to the number of colors in the scale list. You can specify as many as you want. The last thing we need to add is the diagram arrangement. We create an instance of the tree map layout class and call the arrange method of the diagram. This is the way to arrange the diagram using any layout algorithm. Each layout class has its properties, which affect the final result. You can read detailed information about each one in the documentation. The resize to fit items method of the diagram is also a very useful one. It makes sure all items are fitted within the diagram. It is listed in the online documentation as well. We add now a special zoom method that makes sure the diagram is fitted well into the given bounds. It makes some calculations based on the bounds of the diagram and gives the exact zoom factor that needs to be assigned to the diagram view. This was the basic coding for this app, so let's run it and see what we've done. Hmm, here's the diagram. It looks quite promising. The text is not easy to read, so let's use the text color property to make it lighter. We also change the text color of the container node which will make it even harder to see, so we need to assign a darker background to it. Besides the background, we add some more styling to the container node by increasing the caption size and font size. We also increase the font for the nodes, and the diagram looks much better. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could show the country's flag inside the node, right above or under the label.
it is possible. And you can see from the properties of ShapeNode that there are various ways to do that. One is to use the image location property. The text of each node specifies the country name. We can add the images with the same names and it will be easy to assign them. Here is the folder with the images. Let's edit the code and assign each shape node an image. The images are rendered now, but they are stretched to fill each node. We want to have them in the center, so we use Image Align to specify that. It would be nice to have a bit of padding between the text and the flag, so we use the Image Padding property. We set the bottom padding to 10. It's better, but let's increase it a bit. 20 looks perfect. One more thing we can do to make our diagram even more attractive is to add a background. Given the topic of the chart, an image of soil or earth would look interesting. The Diagram class has a Background Image URL where we can specify the path to the image. By default, the image will be centered, so we use Background Image Align to tile it. And with that, our diagram is completely finished. We've just walked you through all the steps needed to build a tree map parsing data from an XML file. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.